You know, much as we've got people who may want that phraseology to come back, say ye not a confederacy, yeah. but already you have people who are asking, uh, Henry, I said, for instance, is it not imperative that we should first and foremost discuss the question, do we all want to stay as a nation? But that conference assumes that we all want to, and now we're just going to discuss the modalities. Is that where it's tilted into? That's why your assumption is the lowest level of knowledge. You don't assume. Social scientists have argued, I'm very quite correctly, that a social problem is not resolved, either by pretending it does not exist, or trying to ascribe it to another source. Until it is done, it's not done. If, if we have resolved these issues, we will not be having a conference after 50 years of independence, 100 years of so-called Lama Commission. But is that not the basis of this conference? The basis How do we want to stay together? But some people, some, some people have come with the mindset that, you know, it's, it's status quo. Let's not discuss all these things. Let's not, because there are, look, I mean, you saw yesterday that, uh, even the day before yesterday, the Sultan of Sokoto led a delegation to the president. What did they go there to say? Mr. President, this conference is skewed against Muslims. As if the president went about picking, oh, we are coming to the conference, are you a Christian? Come. We are coming to the, are you a Christian? Come. You saw the modalities. All the president had to pay was 37 people, and that's it, man. I feel like we're 20 nominees. And when you look at those states, you picked from different states, mixed and the rest. Now, if they say NUJ, go and bring a to this conference. Do they expect the president to say, okay, NUJ, ensure you bring a Muslim? People brought people on the basis of what they can contribute to the conference. But for the Sultan of Sokoto, the, the leader of the Muslim community in this country, followed by Justice Weiss, a former CGN of Nigeria, to now go to the president and say, Oh, this conference is skewed against Muslims. In a country that 21 years ago voted for a Muslim Muslim ticket. Why didn't they, did they protest? In 1984, when General Buhari and Diabu came to power, both Buhari and Diabu were both full of the Muslims. Did they protest? In fact, in that regime of the most eight most powerful figures, six were not Muslims. General Buhari, General Vangida, Vasa, Maguro, uh, Maguro um, and two others. Now, in 89, when Babangida reshuffled his government, Babangida, the head of state, was a Muslim. Chief of Army Staff, Abacha, was a Muslim. All the service chiefs, including the IG, were Muslims. Did they protest? Yeah. And, these are, and these are deliberate right to right options. So, so when, when I say but conference, I, I thought, where I, stakeholders are asked to nominate their representatives, and you now come and tell your country that, oh, this is a Muslim, Muslim Christian. And but I go, back to, uh, I, I go back to what the uh, Lamido of Adamawa has said. Yeah. And, uh, it's a conference, and yeah. uh, a whole a no hold bad, bad kind of conference, and everyone must actually uh, bring forward their point, and they must be listened to. Yeah. Uh, is it out of place that he said what he said? Or don't you think that he, since he has dropped it, uh, other delegates should now maybe perhaps discuss such issues and uh, that is uh, the only way we can move forward? Well, it's, um, if, if we, that there are ways you discuss such issues in a way towards moving forward, there are ways you raise such issues in a way to break up the whole entity. If other delegates from different parts of the country told the line of the alumni of Damawa, then you can kiss Nigeria by. And it's not and it's not as if people don't have their issues. It's not as if I mean I mean uh, a few months ago I was in Ibadan to mourn with 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 a with a Ibadan body market traders who went to, 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 to trade in Bono and fourteen of them were massacred on their money taking. By Boko Haram. So, do you, do you now, if, if we say we want to keep the country together, I want to find out, do you now expect to go to the conference and that's the first thing I raise that what Boko Haram is doing? Once you do that, you have polluted the atmosphere. And let me tell you, for the rest of this conference, the Lamido has diminished himself. You see, there's, there's fault lines, fault lines of geography, um, religion, and um, what's there by basically are three fault lines yeah. geography, religion, and um, tongue. Yeah. These are the fault lines that have um, bedeviled this country for a long time. Yeah. How do we heal them? 
the way to heal them is first of first of all for all of us to cultivate a new mindset to accept How would that, that work yes yeah, to accept that to drop look if we are in a republic you said Nigeria is a republic as someone is talking of my kingdom I stand from here to Cameroon it's it's, it's a simulon. the same thing we talk about federalism we are part of the unitary government we must agree the kind of country we want and that's why some of us have been pushed federalists are pushing federalism it is federalism that can work in the country with Nigeria ethnic mix both air for, because to give autonomy to the very component of the country to, to do to self determine because there's no national consensus. Wouldn't, wouldn't, think, wouldn't that be empowering, um, giving too much a pass to the regions? I mean, someone said at a certain time in history that was what happened. Yeah. I mean, the regions became almost like too powerful, and that's what led to the civil war. No, that's only that's only led to civil war. The question of what the question of uh, federalism in the first republic. If you still look at Nigeria today, the reference point, the golden moment of governance in the country, still remain the first republic. At least in Western Nigeria, and I know for other parts of the country, because that was the era when the uh, Sardar of Sokoto was not ready to be Prime Minister of Nigeria, but would rather be Premier of Northern Nigeria, and we ask one of his associates, Tafapa Lewa, to come to Lagos to be, to be Prime Minister, because the past were the regions, and there was development. But what is going to what is what is causing all the problem in Nigeria today? Is over centralization that 52 percent of our resources is in Abuja, and whoever controls that controls everything. So, that, that's why Abasino will tell you that the next election will be do or die because it's do or die. How, how will all of these issues um, from here and there, how will these issues tackle the challenge we, which we all have in this country, which I think everyone agreed to solve? One corruption, leadership question. How will all these issues address these points? Until we, uh, there's, there's a foundational problem in this country. And until we address that foundational problem, which is the question of the structure of the country. It's, I always say this, look, it's like you go and buy software and you don't have hardware. hardware. You are wasting your money because the software on the other cannot operate. You have to put outside hardware. So the hardware is first, is first of all the structure of this country. We must reconstitute this country in a way that there's relative autonomy for the constituent units to move at their pace, not to be held down, not, uh, not, 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 not to be locked in this national grid. We can release the creative energies of the various sectors and Nigeria can move forward. Let me take this from a hope and uh, perhaps uh, maybe it can set the, the way uh, towards uh, sorting some issues out with that particular comment. He said that uh, the Lamido of Adamawa has placed his agenda on the table. The honors is on other delegates to give him reasons to be a Nigerian. Well, we, we, the, the, the federalist agenda we are taking to this conference, we have taken to this conference, is to sh let everybody know that federalism is not about uh, making anybody to suffer, it's to make all of us to progress, to prosper. But once there are a few people who have the mindset that the only way they can prosper is to repress others. Is to cheat others. Is is within our fairness. This thing is all about being afraid of fairness, of equity, of justice. Once we think that the only way they can prosper is through iniquity, that's also a problem. But once you accept that we can all prosper in a just, equitable society, once we know that we don't have to cheat another person, to, to me, because look, people, what's happening is that people are taking advantage of military rule over the years. The structure of this country was created under the military. Uh, state, local government, every instrument of oppression is going today was killed under the military. We have no choice, we have no debate. Now that we have the opportunity of debate, people are afraid that oh, we may lose privileges. But you see, what they are not understanding is that if I decide now that I want to hold you down, I must stay down with you. And that's what the national grid, that's what Nepal is doing to us. Because now, in Nigeria today, the constant units, if Lagos today say want to generate electricity, they say, okay, generate cannot distribute, it takes the national grid. At the end of the day, Lagos will not have light. The place we are taking light, taking light to will not have light. That's what is happening. Okay, but we're, on the, we're hearing now that 70% uh, voting formula may be adopted at the national conference. And uh, it says that uh, that might have been a compromise reached by the 50 man committee 
comprising leaders of the various groups that have delegates at that conference. And uh, is this the case? Have you heard about this? Well, I've, I've heard about it, uh, but we are waiting to Monday when they will table this before the conference. And then we'll debate it. And uh, we'll look at how realistic is this. Because even, uh, you see, I, I submitted a motion before the leadership of the conference to say that, look, Nigeria is trying to teach you the world a new thing. But there's no country in the world today that I know where 75% is the threshold for simple majority. What, from childhood, what we've all into our democracy is that majority will have their way, while minority will have their say. But what I'm trying to do with this rule is that minorities should have their way, while majority should have their say. And that goes against the natural order. Natural order. In fact, you know, it is this rule of unanimity that killed the League of Nations. The precursor of the United Nations, because they had this ruling that for every decision of the league, every nation must concur unanimously, and the League of Nations was, ne was not able to deal with what, just one issue, because every member had a veto power. A, just one nay rendered a resolution useless, and that's what the United Nations learned from when UN came, that they now have simple majority rule, two thirds, and in fact, it's only in Security Council where the five permanent uh, members. Have to concur with the resolution, and that's why the, the, the United Nations has been successful where the league failed. So this, when you say that, it's, it's, it's possible if you take seventy percent, seventy percent or anything, mm -hmm. 